currently trending nationwide on Twitter is hashtag Chinese virus, because apparently Trump called the coronavirus COVID-19 the Chinese virus sparking outrage among fake news pundits who previously called the coronavirus Chinese virus, but for some reason are now angry that Trump is saying it. Because what they do, if you haven't noticed, is the media will all start saying something. And then as soon as Trump says it, they'll flip and say, aha, now you're racist. I kid you not, though, there are people on Twitter claiming that it's racist to call the virus, which originated in Wuhan, China, the Chinese virus, even though they literally did it over and over again for months. And they're now mad other people are doing it because they have no principles and their entire business is built upon orange man bad. But I've got some really, really scary, interesting, fascinating information about the virus. See, in response to an outrage tweet from UNESCO, where they said, kind, quick reminder, viruses have no nationality. The fight against coronavirus needs science, not stigma. It calls for facts, not fear. Together, we will defeat COVID-19. I made a tweet in response to this about the Spanish flu. And no, the Spanish flu did not originate in Spain, which is kind of the point. Back in 1918, we had a pandemic. We called it Spanish flu and it wasn't even Spanish. Guess what? It was very likely Chinese. Yet we still called it Spanish flu. And that's unfair to Spain, right? The true origins of the Spanish flu are not known, according to cursory research that I've done. I basically read Wikipedia as well as several college, you know, university, academic, historical websites to get an understanding of what, you know, why we called it this and, and what was what this was really about. My point wasn't that Spanish flu has a nationality. It's that today, Donald Trump, people in the media for the past several months, all these journalists were correctly calling this the Chinese coronavirus because it literally originated in China. So how are, how are you going to complain about the nationality of a virus when we, we literally call it the Spanish flu pandemic when it didn't even originate in Spain? Yet now when we're literally calling the Chinese coronavirus, which originated in China, the Chinese virus, they're freaking out. This is what they do. It's fake outrage. They pretend to be angry so they can write articles like this. Trump sparks anger by calling coronavirus the Chinese virus. Oh, heavens me. Donald Trump has referred to the... I can't believe I'm actually reading this. He has sparked outrage for referring to coronavirus as the Chinese virus. After giving an address on Monday warning of possible recession, the U.S. president posted on Twitter, the United States will be powerfully supporting those industries like airlines and others that are particularly affected by the Chinese virus. We will be stronger than ever before. China's foreign ministry spokesman Gang Shuang said Trump should take care of his own matters first. Some U.S. politicians have tried to stigmatize China, which China strongly condemns. He said at a press briefing on Tuesday, we urge the U.S. to stop this despicable practice. We are very angry and strongly opposed to it. Meanwhile, Chinese officials are on Twitter claiming the virus originated in the United States, which is just bald face lie. Come on. But they're but they're still tweeting about it. And they're and they're they're claiming that the e-cigarette. Remember, remember when everyone was smoking those nasty vitamin E e-cig things? I think it was vitamin E. And they started getting really bad respiratory ailments because they were basically burning up their lungs. They're trying to claim that was the origin of the coronavirus among young people. Sorry, not buying it. But I'm going to tell you something really fascinating. I started reading about Spanish flu. Because, you know, everybody's talking about the name, the nationality, and I wanted to understand it. And as it turns out, Spanish flu likely did not originate in Spain. It may have mutated in the United States. It may have come from China. And so what I had to do to avoid a lot of the current political bickering was do a specific search on Google from before the outbreak ever happened. And I found a very interesting website from Stanford. Very, very fascinating. Uh, this is this is virus.stanford.edu talking about the uh, uh, the Spanish flu. Let me read this for you because this is truly, truly fascinating. They say this. The origins of this influenza variant is not precisely known. It is thought to have originated in China in a rare genetic shift of the influenza influenza virus. The recombination of its surface proteins created a virus novel to almost everyone and a loss of herd immunity. Recently, the virus has been reconstructed from the tissue of a dead soldier and is now being genetically characterized. The name of Spanish flu came from the early affliction and large mortalities in Spain, where it allegedly killed 8 million in May. 
However, a first wave of influenza appeared early in the spring of 1918 in Kansas and in military camps throughout the U.S. Few noticed the epidemic in the midst of the war. Wilson had just given his 14 point address. There was virtually no response or acknowledgement to the epidemics in March and April in the military camps. It was unfortunate that no steps were taken to prepare for the unusual recrudescence of the virulent influenza strain in the winter. The lack of action was later criticized when the epidemic could not be ignored in the winter of 1918. These first epidemics at training camps were a sign of what was coming in greater magnitude in the fall and winter of 1918 to the entire world. Now, the few very interesting facts here. The influenza virus mutated and became a novel which means just like the coronavirus we're seeing right now. So if you really want to understand why everyone's freaking out, is that somehow, a hundred years on, when everyone was memeing about a coming pandemic, we saw in China, very similarly to the 1918 Spanish flu, the emergence of a virus which mutated, becoming novel, spreading outside their country, hitting the United States, hitting Spain, and people weren't immune to it. There was no herd immunity. Everyone was getting it. And it had a particularly high mortality rate. Now, what was strange about this, according to, I believe, according to Stanford, is that it primarily affected young people between the ages of 20 to 49. So it's not it's not one for one. It's not the same thing. But we call it the Spanish flu. And it didn't even Spanish didn't even originate there. In fact, it may have actually mutated to its more deadly strain in the United States. So I decided to hop over. A lot of people have been saying to me that People are claiming, you know, that, that, that people are going to Wikipedia and changing things to try and cover up the history of the coronavirus. Now, actually, I don't believe that to be the case at all. When I did a search of news articles and historical references going back 10 years plus, I found that typically they're all saying similar things. It may have originated in China. In fact, even Wikipedia right now puts the blame for the most part on China. Not necessarily like, look, no one's blaming the people of China for creating an act of God. It's a virus. These things happen. But it originated there, and it very well may have originated there in 1918. No one's calling the Spanish flu the Chinese flu. I mean, they're calling it Chinese now because it originated in Wuhan. I, I don't think that has anything to do with the people. It's identifying the virus based on the region. And so what? But let me read something for you from the Wikipedia page. Now, I did something interesting. I went and took a look at different iterations of the Wikipedia page throughout the past several months as the Chinese coronavirus thing started happening. Oh, now they're going to get mad at me too. I started looking at the changes that were made. And in fact, it seems like the edits to Wikipedia have actually called out China even more. So in the past, before there was this pandemic, they didn't mention, for the most part, I mean, they did mention China, but now they've actually gone on to, to, to bring up a lot more about it. What's interesting is the general theory, I, I should read it for you, the hypothesis is that the dense living conditions and, you know, poor hygiene, like poor, like, you know, polluted and dense uh, uh, living conditions in China resulted in a mild flu virus, which they developed a minor immunity to. So when it mutated in other in other areas in the States and in Spain and in Europe, they already had a partial immunity to it. So they weren't hit as bad as the rest of the world. This may be actually happening right now. Check this out. History about the source. They say historian Alfred W. Crosby stated the flu originated in Kansas and popular author John Barry described Haskell County, Kansas as the point of origin. It has also been stated that by late 1917, there had already been a first wave of the epidemic in at least 14 U.S. military camps. The major U.K. troop staging and hospital camp in Etopolis in France has been theorized by many by researchers as being the center of the Spanish flu. The research was published in 1999 by a British team led by virologist John Oxford. In late 1917, military pathologists reported the onset of a new disease with high mortality that they later recognized as the flu. The overcrowded camp and hospital was an ideal site for the spreading of the respiratory virus. The hospital treated thousands of victims of chemical attacks and other casualties of war, and 100,000 soldiers passed through the camp every day. It was also home to a piggery and poultry was regularly brought in for food supplies from surrounding villages. Oxford and his team postulated that a significant precursor virus harbored in birds mutated and then migrated to pigs kept near the front. One of the few regions of the world seemingly seemingly less affected by the 1918 flu pandemic was China, where there may have been a comparatively mild flu season in 1918. 
They say, although this is disputed, see around the globe. There were relatively few deaths from the flu in China compared to other regions of the world. This has led to speculation that the 1918 flu pandemic originated from China. The relatively mild flu season and lower rates of flu mortality in China in 1918 may be explained due to the fact that the Chinese population had already possessed acquired immunity to the flu virus. In 1993, Claude Hanon, the leading expert on the 1918 flu for the Pasteur Institute, asserted the former virus was likely to have come from China. It then mutated in the United States near Boston and from there spread to Brest, France, Europe's battlefields, Europe and the world with allied soldiers and sailors as the main disseminators. He considered several other hypotheses, hypotheses of origin, such as Spain, Kansas and Brest as being possible, but not likely. Political scientist Andrew Price Smith published data from the Austrian archive suggesting the influenza had earlier origins beginning in Austria in early 1917. In 2014, historian Mark Humphreys argued that the mobilization of 96,000 Chinese laborers to work behind the British and French lines might have been the source of the pandemic. Humphreys of the Memorial University of Newfoundland in St. John's based based his conclusions on newly unearthed records. He found archival evidence that a respiratory illness that struck northern China in November 1917 was identified a year later by Chinese health officials as identical to the Spanish flu. A report published in in 2016 in the Journal of the Chinese Medical Association found no evidence that the 1918 virus was imported to Europe via Chinese and Southeast Asian soldiers and workers. It found evidence that the virus had been circulating in the European armies for months and possibly years before the 1918 pandemic. Now, I can't tell you definitively. What I can say is that at least Stanford has speculated that it may have originated in China where it was mild. They developed a, 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 an immunity to it. It then went on to mutate to become more deadly in other parts of the world, which then they still had some immunity to, so they weren't really impacted by it. That's one speculation. However, you could argue that a mild flu is, you know, it's not their fault. And it was the squalid conditions of the people in these camps in Europe and the war, which led to the rapid spread. So although the virus originated there and went on to mutate, the problem really seems to, uh, to me, I think it's fair to criticize at the time. Well, I don't, I don't want to criticize. I think, I think, look, we were in, it was World War I. People were desperate. They were fighting and war is bad. And this resulted in dense, gross conditions where people were suffering and they were desperate. And in this poor, high, you know, low hygiene situation, the virus became particularly deadly and spread very, very quickly. But what I think is fascinating about this is that even the 1918 Spanish flu was, is, is, is part of this constant argument over who was responsible nearly 100 years later. You still have people in China saying, no, 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 there is no evidence we had anything to do with this. You have people in the U.S. saying, actually, it seems like it may have originated in China. You have people in Europe saying it may have originated in U.S. and China. China's blaming the U.S. So you see how the game is played. Nobody wants to take responsibility for what the virus is, but I'll tell you what. Why are we blaming, blaming Spain? That's the funniest thing to me. They're going to rag on Donald Trump for calling it the Chinese virus. The Spanish flu didn't even come from Spain. In fact, to make things worse, they call it the Spanish flu pandemic because it was more, it it hit them particularly hard. So I'll tell you this. I've got two good reasons why we should call this the Chinese coronavirus or the Wuhan virus. Well, actually, I got three good reasons. The first is because it hit them particularly hard and fast just like Spanish flu, not nearly as bad. I think our, our, our medical technology advances as well as communication technology is really helping us keep things controlled. The other issue is that it originated there. It came from Wuhan. That's where we first identified it. So when we call it the Wuhan virus or the Chinese coronavirus, we are not doing that because we don't like Chinese people. Stop lying, you morons. We're doing it because we're identifying the region. That's it. It started there. It spread around the world and there are concerns about it. But of course, We've got tons of articles. Mother Jones, we shouldn't need to explain why Trump's Chinese virus tweet is wrong, but here we are. Oh, shut up, man. You know, look at that. Look at MRC TV. 35 times the media said Wuhan or Chinese coronavirus, but they blame the GOP. There you go. Let me give you the third reason why I think it's fair to call it the Chinese coronavirus or the Wuhan virus. The Communist Party of China the authoritarian dictatorship that was welding people into their home, barricading their doors. I I haven't actually seen anybody welding it, but I've heard stories. But we've actually seen the video of them taking giant metal bars, blocking their doors. 
coming back later and finding people, you know, collapsed on the ground. They are a nightmarish authoritarian dictatorship. They are oppressing so many people. They have camps. They do not deserve the government. I'm not talking about the people. Okay, the government of this country is is inept, it is corrupt. They have lied from the start and they expect us to believe them. In the beginning, they tried covering this up. They were arresting doctors and journalists, people who were blowing the whistle. And if we got information about this before it started, perhaps we could have stopped the whole thing. Now I'm stuck in my house, sort of. I mean, I, you, you can go out. But it, there's some videos emerging where people are, are, are saying, there's a video I saw of dudes getting out of a police vehicle in hazmat suits and arresting someone. Now, some people are claiming it's for breaking quarantine, but you see people riding bikes and doing stuff and driving cars. So I'm not, I'm not entirely convinced that's the case, but it may be. It may be non-essential individuals can't go outside in certain parts of the world. San Francisco's got six, uh, the Bay Area, six counties under a shelter in place mandate. Restaurants are, are being shut down. People are being hurt by this. And it's, and it's, it's kind of extreme. And perhaps when this information emerged, if China just said, yo, we need international help on this one, let's lock down. Maybe we could have stopped it because I want to make sure I, I drive this point home. What Stanford said in this article, which I believe is from 2010, is that an influenza variant may have originated China in a rare genetic shift. A recombination of surface proteins created a virus novel to almost everyone and a loss of herd immunity. Sounds familiar, right? That's what I want to drive home. It seems like we had a chance to prevent the next Spanish flu wave, and maybe we'll do a good job of stopping it. If we knew about it last time, we had better communication technology, perhaps we could have stopped the Spanish flu dead in its tracks. But we had a war going on, and this was in between another war. We had people jammed in camps. We had our communication technology was not that good. You know, I mean, you could, to a certain degree, send fast messages, but come on, you can't compare it to today. We all got cell phones and the internet. I'm sure someone in China is watching this video right now. With that, we have an opportunity for, for China to come out and say this, according to research from Stanford and other historians, may be a similar scenario. Now, a hundred years on, it may be the same thing where a virus has become novel through a mutation, jumping from bat potentially to humans. And this means there's no herd immunity. Everyone's going to get this. It's got a, it's, its mortality rate is 10 to, to 30 times higher than the flu. And if we knew about it, we could have done this isolation much, much more quickly and prevented many of the deaths. I'm going to leave you with one thing. There's a lot of people talking about other diseases. And there's one I think is very notable is tuberculosis because around the world, it's, it's, you know, it's a very, very, uh, there's a very high death toll. In the United States in 2018, there were 9,000 cases of TB. We already have 40, uh, 4,100 cases of the coronavirus in the U.S., and it's likely much, much higher. And we're likely going to see substantially more infected. Uh, more people are going to be infected and many, many more deaths. So to the, there are people out there trying to compare this to other diseases, and I don't think you really can. There's one thing you need to understand about this that we can see from what made the Spanish flu so deadly. It was novel. That's the point that needs to be driven home. We, we saw it 100 years ago. We see it again. And those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. Maybe now this will be a lesson to everybody. Maybe now when you call it the Chinese coronavirus, people, I don't know, should pay attention to why we do the origins and the lies from their government. And it's not a reflection on the people the Chinese people. It's China's government that needs to be called out. And maybe we should stop calling the Spanish flu, I guess. I don't know. That's just history. It's what we call it. The people of Spain were hit hard by it. They get the blame, I guess. But I'll leave it there. In the end, I don't care if you're mad at me for calling it the Wuhan virus or the China virus. Literally means nothing to me when you complain on the internet. So bravo. You've screeched into the wind and I've not paid attention. I don't read my mentions anyway, so... I'll see you all at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out.